Hi everyone, Tranthony Send Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new liturgy album, HAQQ. This is the latest LP from the experimental metal project masterminded by Hunter Hunt Hendricks, composer, guitarist, singer, songwriter, arranger. The title is obviously an acronym. It stands for Heiligen Above Quality and Quantity. That and the front cover here are a product of Hunter's incredible mind, which always seems to be at work, not just on new music, but also on exposing these deep philosophical concepts that seem to inform the sounds he creates. Follow Hunter Hunt Hendrix's exploits online, and soon you'll be catching views of charts and lists loaded with heady terminology. Maybe even a paragraph or two from a manifesto or a really long-winded vlog talking about metaphysics. I would call it pretentious if it didn't all seem like it was coming from a genuine place of curiosity and also vulnerability, like Hunter is genuinely trying to connect to something greater than himself and invite others to do the same. And that something Hunter is attempting to connect to often comes with a religious or a spiritual component, which isn't surprising considering how much the project genuinely borrows from black metal music. But Liturgy isn't your average black metal band, not just in terms of musical aesthetics. Take 2015's The Ark Work, for example, which was loaded with elements of glitch music, hip-hop, uh, MIDI, all coming together with the band's typically loud and searing guitars and drums in a really intriguing way. There's also what Hunter refers to in his black metal writings as the burst beat, less of a steady and stiff blast style of drumming that has been the backbone of numerous classic black metal records, and more of a fluid rolling percussion style that allows the band to quickly build up into these amazing overwhelming crescendos on numerous tracks. You can hear it on most, if not all of the tracks on Liturgy's Aesthetica, quite a few of the songs here too, and this percussion style just brings this amazing feeling of metallic transcendence that to my ears has been unparalleled uh, throughout the decade. So there's all that, and then there's Hunter Hunt Hendrix's philosophical intentions behind the music that he composes, which arguably has put Liturgy in a lot more hot water than anything they're doing musically. Now, in retrospect, I get why black metal traditionalists would reject and be openly angry toward Hunter publicly trying trying to create this antithesis to the forms that make up classic black metal records like Transylvanian Hunger. Not only that, but Hunter openly encouraged American bands to break off from these roots entirely, do their own thing, mostly in the spirit of artistic evolution. And I think listening closer to Hunter's music and reading his words makes it clear that he doesn't hate the Scandinavian black metal scene. I mean, how could he? His life's work is so indebted to it. Sadly, Hunter's vision for a mass embrace of a new direction for the genre didn't really pan out. Black metal's purest mindset has prevented the genre on the whole from going much of anywhere since 2011. And the burgeoning American scene that was creating a gigantic buzz for a moment is quickly becoming a passing phase that lasted between Two Hunters and Sunbather. Seems a great deal of the crowd were just into the shoegazy aesthetics of some of the more black gazy bands out there, I guess. For as grumpy and as immovable as black metal traditionalists are, you have to kind of respect the fact that they're still here plugging away as if none of this ever happened. But so is Hunter, too. As this new liturgy record is a bold culmination of everything that has made the project groundbreaking, up until this point. Now, despite HAQQ being so large in scope, this album is actually one of Liturgy's trimmest projects in a while, with just nine tracks, 45 minutes. The track list is pretty evenly divvied up into the seven or eight minute metal pieces and two or three minute interludes in between them. Only major exceptions are the droning guitar outro and the tracks Virginity and Pasicalia, which are not lengthier metal pieces, but side by side, they complement each other, feeling like a larger nine minute block. So the kickoff to this record, the intro track, I think is as grand a statement you could ask for from the beginning of a liturgy album. All of these light, swirling electronic glitches instantly explode into this furious wall of guitars and drums. It is a fluid burst of energy. The performance is already incredible. The guitars are so quickly picked. The drums are dizzying. What follows from here are a series of versatile and somewhat mathematical guitar and drum passages that Hunter tries to 
arrange other instrumentation around. He already showed his ambitions to do this on the ARC work in 2015, and now he is building on that desire here, really perfecting honing, but now he's doing it with these alternating layers of squealing woodwinds and woeful moans. I know it's not this, but it does really sound like a couple of people in the studio blowing as hard as they can into a couple of recorders. Meanwhile, the singers at this point on the song sound like they're either too cold or depressed to be singing. Whoa. Now, I will admit, all of this sounds very odd, but the placement of these sounds in the mix is actually pretty good. A lot better than I thought the ear-piercing bells were placed uh, on the artwork. It all sounds messy at first, but eventually the woodwinds and the vocals in their own way sync up with some of the guitar leads, layering up in a way that feels kind of triumphant just before a quick, glitchy transition. The stakes of this track are raised even higher when the singing genuinely starts to sound great angelic. At this point of the song, we're just bordering on listening to an avant metal opera. And there are a lot of different phases throughout this track, all of them flowing together pretty seamlessly, eventually concluding with a very strong ending too. Not sure if I could have asked this song to set the tone for this album any better. It's like Hunter perfectly distilled one of his dense philosophical or sonic theses into a musical composition. The first Exico interlude that comes after this isn't a bad moment on the record. It's a quick, regal piano piece with some glitchy edits here and there. Aesthetically, doesn't sound like anything that came before it or comes after it, but by the end of the record, it's pretty clear these intermission moments are merely just palate cleansers to almost clear your mind in between these incredibly dense and relentless performances, compositions, mixes, because this album is a very intense listen, and as a Liturgy fan, of course, I anticipated what I'm hearing on the intro track, but really by the end of the record, it, it really starts to weigh down on you. So while these interludes don't make for the best album flow that I've ever heard in my entire life, uh, they do sound good, and it's certainly a lot better than if the interludes were boring or if the interludes weren't even there at all. The track Virginity opens up with all these gorgeous harp runs, literal harp runs, cascading over tragic tremolo-picked guitars. That distant, throaty, wretched, screaming style of singing that Hunter usually brings to Liturgy's albums is here, but now it's sounding a little freakish, a little inhuman. Hunter starts hitting listeners with even more synced up guitar leads and choral vocals, but this time they're really going hand in hand, climbing up this amazing melodic progression that just gets higher and higher and higher. With the guitars and drums being played more fiercely, the higher this melody reaches. It sort of has the effect of seeing a pong ball bouncing back and forth between two paddles on a screen, and eventually it starts going so fast it becomes a blur. <laughs> For me, it's stuff like this that makes Liturgy one of the most, if not the most, dynamic band in metal today. Because I can't really think of any groups that are doing such fast, skilled, well-executed, and composed swells and crescendos like these. Your favorite post-metal band could never. This is pretty much the end of the track. As I mentioned earlier from here, we get a very smooth transition into the song Passacaglia, which immediately brings us into these head-banging, heavy, grand riffs that feel like an amazing let-off of tension built up by virginity. And the epic quality of the riffs on this track are enhanced by the woeful and dreary strings hanging in the background. There's then some added layers of glockenspiel and vibraphone whose chimey, ringing, fluttery notes are reminiscent of some of the bells that were included on the artwork, but I just find it to be a lot more gratifying this time around. The rest of the song is mostly a thunderous riff fest, maybe not as tightly executed or as hypnotic as some of the groovier songs from Aesthetica, mostly because the added instrumentation here makes it a bit of a behemoth, but it's still a pretty incredible incredible moment on the record. The second interlude on the record is a chilling bell piece whose notes seem to ring out for Ever. It's another nice palate cleanser and becomes a bit surreal when these ghostly vocal harmonies and pianos start drifting into the mix. Then we have God of Love, which I thought was great as a single, as a teaser track to this album, and it sounds even more powerful 
in the track list, and kicks off with a seriously cinematic string opening. Much of what's to follow features the very same instrumental suspects that we've been hearing so far, but now it's all culminating the vocals, the vibes, the glockenspiel, the strings, the bells, the guitars and drums. These things are intensifying, hammering on the mix all at once. It is mind-blowingly thick and loud. On at least a few points, it sounds like the whole thing is just going to implode. And the song is structurally impressive too, despite how much is going on. Each section feels pretty defined from the last. And the structure of the track is really impressive too. Great momentum carried across the song. Each musical passage contrasts really well from the next. Now, considering how heavy and relentless and just mind-melting this cut was, the third interlude here, I felt personally like I really truly needed. The spacious, fluttering pianos here are a very nice and uh, welcome break, and uh, it's, it's great that they last for almost four minutes, because really after everything that has occurred before it, God of Love is, is just a marathon. The title track is effectively the record's last hurrah. It's not as heavily arranged as most of the songs that precede it, but that's fine. What really gets the magic of the song across is the muscular and very toned uh, riffing and drumming throughout the track, hitting these great, very sharp grooves. And sure, at various points of the song, there are some vocals or piano hanging in the background, but they don't take up that much of the mix. They don't distract too much from what the drums and the guitars are doing. The stop on a dime transitions, the head banging riffs, and all of this is strangely enhanced by the multiple I would say uh, really incessant at some points, glitchy edits that are placed throughout the track. All of a sudden a riff will be thrown into this cycling skip and then just burst into another drum beat or riff. It's pretty impeccable how Hunter is able to manipulate these skips and these glitches to actually build up and intensify any number of moments of the composition. From here we have a seamless transition into the semi-ambient outro on this record, whose curious bells and pianos eventually give way to some very raw and tinny guitars that sound pretty typical for any number of liturgy compositions, but uh, eventually these guitars get very fat and distorted, kind of shoegazy, drony. A little uneventful as a final, final moment on the record, but I, I think for an album of this general intensity, uh, a meditative finish can be pretty fitting. I truly don't have many complaints about this record. I wish it came out earlier. <laughs> In the loudest and thickest moments here, there are spots that I wish where the sound engineering was better, the separation between the instruments was better, but the fact that it all comes together in such a grand, aggressive, explosive, loud way is a pretty decent trade-off. For sure some of the transitions into the interlude tracks could have been better. While all that would be great, it would just be a cherry on top of what's already an incredible album. And with this record being out, and with this decade coming to a close, I would like to say that the general lack of appreciation for what liturgy has tried to do in the metal field this decade is one of the biggest L's of this past 10 years. This lack of appreciation will most likely continue on for a very long time, because Hunter's music is certainly not going to appeal to everyone. But hopefully we can reach a point where the ideas presented here aren't so unorthodox, and more innovation in black metal can be widely accepted beyond someone trying to take the genre's already smudgy sound and just apply some shoegazy aesthetics to it, which is fine, but there's so much untapped potential in the genre that only a few groups seem to be willing to dig out, and Liturgy is certainly one of them, uh, in my opinion, the most successful. Most daring as well, especially on this record. I'm feeling a light to decent nine on this one. Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Liturgy, forever.